not until my senior year. Uh, so my senior year of high school, I did a, I guess it was kind of a generic career education course. And um, I guess it's more of like a personality test, I guess that type of approach. And based on that, they list out some things that may suit you best and this was one of them that came up and I already had that interest in science so I went with it um I think a lot of the high school classes were more of that introduction level um so I think they more so like I said I guess they just kind of introduced me to it so those things would be you know kind of basic biology whether it's cellular or um basic intro to kind of the ana the anatomical side. I mean, yeah, the college classes are a uh, step up, so they have their challenging uh, times. Um, I would say, you know, it's definitely doable. You just have to, you have to put in the time and the effort to, um, to do that, you know, whether that's your first year or, you know, or the, the last year, it, it all takes, um, take some effort to get to that point with this career it, it's eliminating the patient contact part so I think that was one of the big things that was for me was attractive to it you know it, it still has a big impact um, on the care of the patient but you're eliminating the patient contact part I mean especially where I'm at um, we don't have any patient contact. We don't collect the specimens. That's all up to the caregivers um, up in the inpatient floors, outpatient uh, clinics. Uh, but at the same time, what we do, I think CDC did a, a study a few years ago and it said like 70% of diagnosis for patients comes from what we do. So it, it still has a significant impact. But it was, it was very challenging uh, for me, I did mine at St. John's Hospital, and they have a nine-month program there. So it was, I think it was over 100 tests, quizzes, whatever. So it, it is jam-packed into that time period, but it is, uh, it's challenging, but you're learning a lot. And when you're there for us, at the same time that we were learning the theoretical side, we were also in conjunction, we were also working in the lab, um, learning the the test and how, how they're how they're run and the the uh, theories behind those. Yeah. And for us, you know, you might be learning about hematology, but at the same time, in the lab, you're doing blood bank. So you do have to keep all those things in balance and um, know how to organize your time. For us here, we have a, um, my, I'm part of the core laboratory. So that based the uh, chemistry, hematology, um, immunology, and uh, those are the main, the main sections. But for me, I'm more focused in hematology. So for us, we have a large uh, oncology population here. And so I think for a large facility like us with the research that they have, also going on, we get patients from all around the region. Ecology is more of the focus with cancers uh, and different malignancies and whether that be like a lung cancer or uh, a leukemia, lymphoma, things like that. Those are things that we're dealing with. Uh, I think that the impact that we have as uh, medical laboratory scientists uh, kind of goes unexposed in the sense that a lot of people that you talk, that I talk to when they ask what I do and I explain to them that I'm a medical lab scientist, most of the time they don't know what I do. Um, if I say I work in a lab, they think that I just draw the blood. And um, unfortunately that's, that's only the beginning part, but uh, we do a lot more than. Let's take a, a, a complete blood count, for example. So that's looking at your white count, your red count, uh, your hemoglobin, uh, those are big ones. And oftentimes patients will go into an ER, for example, and maybe they're, whatever symptoms they're showing, they run the CBC. And as a technologist, my job is to run the test and then maybe they have a low hemoglobin. 
And my job is to communicate that to them and notify them that they have a critically low hemoglobin if that's the case. Um, yeah, that's a good question because there are a lot of people in that position. And so I think that uh, starting in a clinical lab is a great stepping stone because there are a lot of things that can branch off of that. And if you still have the um, desire to do something in science, this is a great start. So you can, well, obviously you'd be working in a lab, you're directly dealing with uh, biological chemi chemical testing. And it's also a stepping stone, whether you get, uh, you sit for the exam and become certified, or you can use this as a stepping stone to another um, another laboratory, whether it be research, or if you want to step out of this area and work in IT, or it's a good stepping stone though. Have fully, pretty much fully automated, especially for our chemistry um, testing and our hematology testing with uh, CBCs, for example. Um, we have automated lines that these robotic lines uh, eliminate us having to touch the sample. So it's kind of a safety thing for us. And it also is more efficient with the uh, turnaround times of samples. Basically from our perspective, a sample gets drawn, it is delivered to the lab, our lab associates, place it onto the robotics line and it goes to our analyzers, runs a specimen and goes back into automatic storage without us ever having to touch it. And if there are abnormal results, that's when we step in. Here at this lab, we have a middleware, which is just a software that flags samples. So maybe they have a high white count. Maybe they have a very low white count. If it's anything out of our normal ranges that we expect, these softwares and these analyzers will flag them and that's when we step in and we have procedures in place to find a reason why they potentially have those abnormal results and with the cells in their body the white blood cells we have a digital analyze or a digital software that will actually zoom in on through a microscope and it'll zoom in and take pictures of their cells and from then we can organize them and categorize them accordingly a uh, typical day shift for me, um, we come in um, at our hospital, they have routine daily draws, uh, daily blood collection, and those are typically drawn four or five o'clock in the morning. And I think by the time we get here around seven, uh, those samples are either all the way complete or they are getting to the end of, uh, of those collections. So we're busy in the morning. Uh, what we have to do for our analyzers, we have to uh, run quality control um, three times three times a day. So every eight hours, every shift has to run quality controls on their analyzers to make sure that the expected ranges are being met. Um, and throughout the day, we receive both inpatient samples and outpatient samples from clinics. So quality control, uh, we have reagents that um, companies make and these reagents have expected values. Um, so let's say we're running for, um, for a CBC, a quality control on a CBC. So we have a reagent that has an expected result. So let's say the hemoglobin is supposed to be 12. We run it through our analyzer. It is supposed to be within what we use as two standard deviations. So we have a, an average of what's supposed to be and it's supposed to be close to that. And if it's outside of that average, then we have issues that we have to address through some troubleshooting steps, whether that be to calibrate the instrument or uh, rerunning new controls. And once those have passed, then we can perform patient samples. So a patient's results, if we have quality control issues, things that are not passing what our expected ranges, we will not run patient results or we will not run patient samples. Um, they have to be within those expected ranges before we can perform anything on a patient. That's how the doctor knows it's good results. Yeah, I think a good case that I can bring up as an example of what we do, um, we've had countless times where a patient will come into the ER and they will have 
um, clinic, they'll have complaints of fatigue and they'll have complaints of things that you wouldn't think are very significant. Maybe they're, maybe they just have kind of a low hemoglobin, something that we see very often. Turns out we have found, we find something that is much more involved, um, perhaps a leukemia or lymphoma going on. And without what we do, they would have never realized that how, how severe it actually was. They, maybe they just write it off as something insignificant, but it turns out it's actually something. I think it's a good fit for me. Um, whenever I was in high school, I took, it, it, I think it was more so based on personality. I'm more kind of an introverted personality. And so without the patient contact, it's a good fit for me because I still have that desire to work in healthcare, but I don't have to have that patient contact, uh, which isn't as much of a match to my personality. So that's why it's a good fit for me. Um, well, I think if you have the desire to do something in science, but you're not sure where to start um, because there are, because there are so many avenues that you can go, I think that a clinical lab is a great start because it, exposes you to everyday science that we don't realize goes on um, all the time.